Bike Exchange Jayco. Eddie Dunbar in from Ineos to Bike Exchange Jayco. One Tour to Hungary GC, one Settimana GC this year. His first couple of pro wins. Chris Harper in from Yumbo Visma, Rudy Porter and Blake Quick, a pairing from Trinity Racing. Filippo Zana, who won, he had a Tespazio and he won a race, and he won Italian National Champs for, <laughs> from Bardiani. Felix Engelhardt from Tyrol, KT, KTM, that's where uh, Steinhauser came from, went to EF this year. But this show, as always, is brought to you by Zwift, whether you're just starting out on your cycling journey or are looking for those final tune-ups ahead of a big event or race, Zwift is the online cycling platform that makes things fun, as well as being the name sponsor of the Tour de France firm, Avec Zwift, and this podcast. If you want to find out more about Zwift, the platform, the race, go to Zwift.com, and if you want to try it out, you can get a free seven-day trial What's curious to me, and by the way, outgoing Caden Groves, developing Australian sprinter, signed his Neopro contract at Bike Exchange, and then he's off after coming good. And then Nick Schultz, uh, Daniel Benson at Velo News, said that he believes Schultz has, he said, he tweeted that Schultz has been offered an extension or was offered and seems to be leaving, which is curious to me, but Dunbar Benji, a lot's been said about, and I think he's a nice rider, don't get me wrong, but I don't think Eddie Dunbar's been signed on the basis or on the salary to just be like a fourth, like a Damien House. I think he's been signed to like target World Tour GC top tens and be like a premium mountain domestique for Simon Yates, who I believe they've extended as well. It all depends on the money. But what do you expect from Dunbar? Like, do you think he is a marquee signing or just like a a nice rider. So first, when it comes to what I personally expect when it comes to Eddie Dunbar is that I currently see this as a rider that has done well in, let's be honest about it, pro races, not necessarily broken through significantly, lost that mountain hill stage at Hungary while willing GC, I think from Tiberi in the end, on that uphill finish. Like, he's shown that he can compete on these races but he hasn't necessarily shown to dominate these races and he was very strong at the race we mentioned earlier this year I think Copia Bartali and I feel like the next step for Eddie Dunbar is hunting a world tour stage win he has not necessarily gotten the stage win below that of a significant manner but Once you go to bike exchange, you're in a Grand Tour setting and you've got opportunities to go for stage and World Tour stage races. And that is one of the goals, I'd say, a World Tour stage win. Next to that, I'd argue that the step that they're going to take and something I'd like to see Dunbar try, but it depends on what his role in the team is going to be, is a World Tour top 10 in GC. I don't know which race I'm calling that yet. He hasn't proven that yet. (laughs) Fuck Bologna when it comes to this. No offense. Like, not the country, a, but the race. I mean, a decent, important, valuable top 10 in World Tour. Like, a Tour de Suisse, for example. A race like that is what yeah. I'd like a Dunbar to try a top 10 in GC from. He was strong in Tour de Suisse, I think, two years ago in Carapaz 1. He came 12 he last year the, when he was exactly. domestic. His full blown so, domestic for Carapaz. Does that say that he can get a top 10 if he goes for himself? I want to see that. Because taking leadership instead of being a domestique, something completely different. And it's also a factor of can he do the same that he did at Ineos for a Carapaz, at Bike Exchange for for himself, for example. Next to those two goals, I do agree that he's likely going to play a role in supporting Simon Yates in Grand Tours. And the question there is, what do we expect from Dunbar as a domestique as well for a Simon Yates and a Grand Tour, and I'd say I currently see him as an average domestique with the potential of becoming a stronger domestique or showing himself as a as a stronger domestique like that Tour de Suisse for Carapaz, for example, but I want to see it first, and that hasn't happened yet, so I hope they're not paying him on the basis that it's going to happen, but on the basis that it could happen. That makes sense? Yeah, I agree with that uh, for sure. If you're paying him on the basis that this guy 
we're going to send Yates to Giro, we're going to send Dunbar to another race to be GC leader. I just, I don't see it. Like, is uh, there's, there's a, a belief that Ineos can stifle some riders, and I would say Eddie Dunbar should be grateful that Ineos. I think Ineos did him a favour this year, by the way. Sending him to Settimana, sending him to the Tour de Hungary instead of being a Giro domestique and maybe not performing in the high mountains, I think Eddie Dunbar should be thankful for Ineos. And I think that might have made his contract a bit better. Now, there's a couple of teams where if you if a team signs a rider from there, like maybe Laporte to Jumbo Visma from Cofidis, you think there's some untapped potential there. That rider can be improved, even though they've been a pro for five, seven years. I would say signing Ineos and Jumbo Visma riders is the opposite of that. They've had world-class performance coaching and management, one would think, best in class. Now, it won't, it won't be perfect for every rider. Not every rider gets the best treatment at all teams, even the best teams, but... On average, those teams get the most out of their riders. And I would question, you know, he's 25, about to turn 26 in a month. He is light. He's been on Ineos since the middle of 2018. I know COVID was in the middle of that. But if he hasn't done big climbing performances from 20 to 30 minutes by now, why is it going to happen all of a sudden? And... I question whether this guy can really shred a race for Yates. And this could be, again, we've got a new award. New award is the Jai Henley Award. And if you win the Jai Henley Award, it's when <laughs> I, I question the transfer <laughs> oh. and then you end up winning a Grand Tour the next year or doing <laughs> outperforming my expectation next year. So Eddie Dunbar could win the Jai Henley Award. It's, it's open, but I just – I don't see it um, in terms of just turning into like a – Wait, yeah, that guy. I think if it was going to happen, it was would have happened already. And you, you know, Tudor Hungary and Sediman. I'm sorry, but it's again, it's ahead of Tull at his teammate, and it's ahead of Tiberi, who's a time troll, like 20 year old on trek. They're two one races, uh, but I hope he does well, and maybe he'll get more leadership at Bike Exchange. Maybe that's the big change. But the reason I've gone on that long rant, right? The reason I have is because Nick Schultz is rumored to leave, and I don't. He's from Brisbane, but I never, I never met the guy. I don't know him. I'm not friends with him. But this guy came 11th on the Perigude stage 11, Tour de France. Eddie Dunbar never shown that this year. And you're like, 11th, what, you know, well, that's, what does that mean? That was in the group. And he, by the way, he had, before then, he'd come second on the Mejev stage. He'd been riding as a domestique on, I think, the Carcassonne stage 15, maybe full grown of And this guy was doing a, you know, different things throughout the Tour de France and, you know, nearly got pipped, you know, pipped on the line at Mejev. And then suddenly he's finishing with the Godou Quintana Menkes Vlasov group. I, I don't yep. think he was in the break. I might be wrong. On the hardest raced stage, maybe, of this Tour de France. And um, he's making a group of 10, a group of eight in the Tour. And he's Australian and he's in his prime. And he's. He's punchy, he came like 14th in flesh, and he's rumored to be leaving. I don't get it, Benji. It looks to me like Haig 2.0. Haig, who seemed to be preference below Hamilton and below Yates brothers, yeah. when he's, and then he left before his prime ended, probably in the Vuelta. Schultz looks like another rider who's slipping through the cracks, and wherever he goes, he could be a really top rider. He, he might bomb Arctic race now, and I look stupid, but, <laughs> but he's shown what, like, I don't know. I just thought he was a must re-sign and I would make him a second GC guy and he'd probably cost less. I agree with the must re-sign. I'm not sure about the second GC guy yet. That's a bit of a, a stretch for me in my imagination so far. But I'd like to pull you back to the thing you said earlier in today's podcast. You said when a rider comes from Ineos, you expect them to have already tapped out everything when it comes to potential as possible. And you brought up that a team like Laporte's team, ex-team, Kofidis, for example, when going to Yumbo, was a team that was not necessarily the team that Laporte has had all his potential tapped out yet. Is Bike Exchange the kind of team that tactically closed off 
Schultz has a domestique in many occasions where a rider like Schultz comes out of and could have a higher potential than initially anticipated because of that. Bike Exchange is kind of an old school team where they have the leaders and they go into a race. And it's, it's funny listening to the Arctic Race interview of Dylan Groenewegen today where he said, yeah, it was difficult. I mean, I won the stage, but like we've got a mixed team here. We, we've got like, we're not just here for the sprint. I, I'm sort of, you know, got on the Armand Grindel Janssen. We've also got a couple of guys for GC. And I was like, yeah, that's what a lot of teams do. <laughs> they send a versatile team. Whereas Bike Exchange have often, they've been like, at the World Tour last year, you're not getting in the break. You're not doing that. You, we are going to chase down the break for a 2% chance of Matthews winning. Um, or, or Gronewegen winning. Dauphiné, for example, Benji. Like, yep. could Nick Schultz have done something different in Dauphiné? I don't know, but he probably wasn't even there. But uh, they just they were going for the Gronewegen. And then on GC, it's been the Yates brothers. If the whole team is constructed around the Yates brothers. Didn't Caleb Ewan get left out of the tour and then left the team because they wanted to have nine guys <laughs> supporting Yates GC in, like, yep. 2018? Like, that's what I mean. And... So to answer your question, yes, I think guys, if if you're not on that pecking order where you're the leader, well, yeah, if you're chasing the break all day, like it's even if you do get an opportunity in one stage, well, if you've been chasing in forty degrees for two weeks, it's not great preparation for it. Um, so yeah, I think Schultz. It turns on the money, but I think he could be a decent pickup elsewhere. I would say though, bike exchange. I'm not saying they're like Cofidis where they're getting maybe they don't have the best nutrition or TT stuff. Bike Exchange won two Grand Tour time trials with two different riders in the same Grand Tour. Like they must be doing something right in the TT. And I yep. think they've got Gronovin climbing as best as he probably could. I think that stuff, they're actually quite good. It's just more opportunities. I'm not criticizing Zanastani. He's 23. His haircut in the PCS photo, it looks a bit fucked up. But uh, <laughs> Italian champion on Bardiani, you know, we, we were at the Giro, Benji. Remember Bardiani? Those guys are doing the TT warm-ups in full sun. Yeah. And we were like, like, their budgets are different. So I think that signing's fine. Um I think he's okay. They can develop him all right. And Porter and Quick, Quick's a young sprinter. I think, you know, from Trinity, those guys are good signings, whatever. The last one is Harper. And he's kind of the same, my Dunbar rant. It's that again in that he's been <laughs> on Yumbo. He's, what is he, 25 or so? I don't know how old he is. Um, like, what's... What's the plan for Chris Harper? Is he just going to be he's 27, actually? He's turning 28 this year. Is he just a Damien Housen 2.0 to do well in the Australian Conti circuit? Like, why Maybe. do we think they're signing him? And is there a yeah. problem? Like, no Storer, no O'Connor, no Hague. Like, is he the premium Australian talent? No, he's not the premium Australian talent. Like, his his biggest achievement in his career is... People thinking that he won a UAE tour stage when it was Vingegaard that did it instead. So he clearly is not the premium rider when it comes to Australian climbers when it comes to that. But he's a decent domestique in the climbing, I dare to say. But I rate him on the same level as Housen. Very inconsistent and hopefully decent enough to play a role for bike exchange. He's coming from a Yumbo team, similar to Ineos. That's a team where I see riders blossom and live up to their potential and therefore getting a ride from a team like that that's true that's very true actually it's different when it's a guy who's like 20 you know turning 20 i think harper he had health issues i think last year he was a really really good like domestique ruler domestique in the dauphine he was he pulled like for three hours every day i think he was fine there i don't think he's going to be on a million bucks but just goes to show that, like, I think it's cheap. Yeah, he. I think it'll be relatively cheap, as you said. But it's like, it's not going to change the team, is it? But he might be a committed domestic for Yates, and and I think this is unfair in a sense. The way I've looked through all of this, in that it's not a transfer, but they've extended Simon Yates. Simon Yates can podium a Grand Tour in the future. They extended Michael Matthews. He just won. The Mond stage in Tour de France in really impressive fashion Mendy. in a different way. Is it Mendy? No. It's Mond. 
<laughs> see, I, I get gaslit here. I, I, I think my French is right. And so it's the Jalabert Bear climb. Um, like, why should I criticize them for not signing quote unquote premium top tier guys when they have Matthews, who's a versatile guy who just won a Tour de France stage in Australia? They have Simon Yates. And I think Simon Yates is better in the next three years than Carapaz, depending on where Carapaz goes. 